Hi there, my name's John Atkins and welcome to another episode of FWA TV. This week we're going to be taking a special look at two of the FWA's most exciting young stars, Jack Xavier and James Ty. The first match we're going to have a look at James Ty in a triple threat match against fellow rookie sensation Raj Ghosh. Have a look at this matchup and see how the opening contest from British Uprising 1 very nearly stole the show. Welcome to FWA's British Uprising Part 1. I'll be your host for this evening, Tony Giles, alongside none other than Nick London. That's me, and now we see referee Steve Linsky coming down to ringside. And if Steve Linsky's coming down, that can mean that only one person is about to follow. The lovely Jane Charles, the FWA ring announcer, about to kick things off for FWA British Uprising. In Part 1, you're going to see uh, Jerry Lynn versus the anarchist Doug Williams in the main event however today we're gonna kick off with a freeway dance it's gonna be Jack Xavier, Roger Ghosh and James Ty fighting for an All England Championship title shot see the first combatant come down to the ring, James Ty, WOW Magazine's Rookie of the Year. This man, to me, looks like a young Lars Storm. He has it all. He's got the charisma, he's got the moves. This man could walk out of here tonight easily the number one contender for the FWA All England title. James Ty has been on a hell of a runaway at the moment after defeating his own teacher, Mark Sloan, not too long ago at no surprises for the Portsmouth Pyramid Centre. to the ring now, one of the opponents, Raj Ghosh, one of the youngest members of the FWA roster. He may be young, but he's got the talent to prove that he belongs in that ring. Again, someone else that could easily walk out of here tonight, the number one contender for the All England title.
is my pick to win this match, Jack Xavier. Many consider him almost the uncrowned All England champion. He had a massive feud not too long ago against Mark Sloan, who then was the All England champion. However, he couldn't quite get the job done. Now, Jack is only two matches away from that championship. But first, he's got to get through James, and he's got to get through Raj, and he's got to become the number one contender to the All England Championship. It's quite true, Nick. Jack Xavier is definitely one of the people's favourites. Now all three men there uh, exchanging pleasantries and soon they're going to have to get this match underway and lock up. But Tony, how does a three-way lock-up work? To be perfectly honest, Nick, I couldn't tell you, but I think we're about to find out. The crowd behind all three of these guys, this should be a classic. We're all three men now testing the waters. Um, no, no look up there. I think the key in a three-way dance is to maybe single out one man and go for that. It looks as if James Time may be going for Jack Xavier here. However, he's got his eye on Raj, and that's why he's got his eye on him. It's quite plain to see that all three men are very wary of what's going on around them, and neither one is going to make a silly mistake and let that number one contendership slip away. Well, the entire crowd is behind all three men on an offensive fight, but now Raj has got the hammer lock on him, and then a headlock, and now James Time with a snap net. And Raj goes in with a headlock. Jack Xavier onto his feet. Oh, with a wrist lock on James Ty. James must be in excruciating pain right about now. As Jack Xavier, he moves into the hammerlock and goes forward and takes Raj's head. And now Jack Xavier with a headlock and it's James Ty with the, with the wrist lock. And now Jack seems to be floating over. He's singled out James's arm and there it is, an overhead key lock. Now Raj with a waist lock. He's jumping position. It looks like he may be going for some sort of German suplex as James Ty goes behind, goes for the school where Raj goes, not letting hold of Xavier. And now Raja has a pinfall on Jack, however now James has a pinfall on Raja. It's not a free count. All three men are down, all three men are up. Unbelievable. All three men had each other scouted so well, they were able to predict the other's moves. That was a fantastic display of freeway technical wrestling. You could hear from the crowd the reaction they got. This is where wrestling is heading. As James Tyre rolls back, takes Jack's leg. Jack must be unbelievable. He's got his arm and his leg in a twist. Jack might want to make a wish at this point, and Jack's got to find a way out of this, and he's going for it. How did Jack miss the Insegurity now? James with an Achilles lock. As Raj goes, bounces off the rope, and takes the head of Jack Xavier. Jack is in double trouble right now, but Raj, realising there's a head right there, goes for Jack Xavier as well. Raj, the dominant force at the moment. What a lovely pair of headlocks. And now Raj, the wild card of this match. However, no! James now reapplies the Achilles lock and puts the pressure on Raj with that reverse chin lock. James Ty proving he's no monkey's boy. He knows where he's at. He knows what he's going for. As Raj goes with a roll through. Who's he going for here? Jack Xavier is down. Raj goes with a roll through. Neck snap on James Ty. Well, Raj and nearly snap the neck right off James Ty there. And now we're at this kind of um, dead end. All three men are back in a standing position and they've got to relock up. Oh, Raj Ghosh is only 17 years old. Can you imagine what it would feel like for him to go home this evening, Nick, and say, I'm the number one contender for the All England title? Well, it depends how often he's been thrown around. It could be quite so. With an Inzaguri to the outside, Jack Xavier sends James Ty crashing down. James trying to speed up the proceedings, and he paid for it. And now it's Jack and Raja. Jack with an arm drag on Raj. And Raj now with the arm drag on Jack. Those are so powerful, they're ripping the shoulders almost. Jack and Raj, oh my god, it looks like he's going for a reverse DDT as James takes the knees away. Jack gets his move, all three men are down. Jack almost looked like he was going for Xavier. And now James, however, James, James clipped the knee of Jack and Jack was forced to drop Raj. James now going over Raj and picks him up and he sends him to the corner. It looks like Raj is going for a spinning head scissors and James throws him over. Oh my god! A DDT, a spinning DDT from Raj Ghost as James Ty takes Raj down. He goes for the pin. That was a fantastic counter by James there. We're getting to the point now where Triple Fresh saw freeway dances. They're becoming a bit of an art form now, and these three men are showing why they're on top of their game. As James Ty goes for some sort of double underhook. Is it going to be a power bomb? No, Raj floats over. Raj looks like he's going for the Russian leg sweep as Jack Xavier takes them both down. Jack Xavier with the next. Snap. Raj with the Russian leg sweep. 
Jack Xavier almost with a three count Raj managing to get the shoulder up there all three men are down all three men are down indeed that move that Jack executed took a lot out of all three men but we'll see who gets first to their feet here referee Steve Linsky putting in the count making sure everything is above board Jack Xavier the first man up goes oh my god what's this a neck breaker Raj nips up takes Jack down Jack takes James down this is three way madness now all three men are down and it looks like Raj could have the advantage but unfortunately he just couldn't capitalize he couldn't get the cover Raj could have gone home but it just wasn't meant to be I'm sure if any one of these men were to roll over now and drape their arm on any opponent they would get the three count as they slowly slowly start making their way to their feet who's gonna be the first man up Tony and it's James James tight up in the corner Jack Xavier with the spear on James in the corner he sees Raj what's Raj going for Raj is going for the tarantula on the ropes a submission move as James tight drop kicks Jack drop kicks Raj and I'll tell you one thing both men spilled to the outside and it looked like Jack cracked the back of his head on that wooden floor and now you've got to wonder is James going to go for the smaller man in Raj or is James going to go for the oh hang on what's James doing now I don't like the look of this oh did you see the way Jack Xavier he moved out of the way there he moved out of the way thought he'd done it unfortunately not James Tyler with a picture perfect Asai Moonsault to the outside full body weight onto Jack Xavier that's very uncharacteristic of James when you consider that it's triple threat and that there's a title shot on the line I'm not surprised he did it and now Roger oh. springboards through springboard to the top and a cross body have you ever seen anything like that before well I'm afraid I'm gonna have to stick with my pick of Jack and Xavier however James and Roger both looking mighty strong and it's gonna be mighty close to be honest Nick I wouldn't mind if any one of these three guys won the match tonight they're all fantastic combatants as Roger goes for the pin on James Jack's showing himself to be hurt here seems to be hurting all over and this is giving Raja a window an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with James this takes out that third element and Raja might capitalize and get the win with a shocking forearm to James Tyler as he backs him into the corner a couple of blows to the guard Jack Xavier's back in the ring Jack now sending Raj to the corner, but Raj flips over and, and James has caught him. He's going for the German suplex. However, they back body drop Jack Xavier. can't get the suplex and Roger uh, he's to roll through he's got the pin one two Jack Xavier rolls it over again oh yeah there's no way to call that for by saying basically it was a kick to the back side <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Jack accidentally put the pin on the other man, but he kicked him in the keister. What's Jack got? <gasps> Rolling release, X-Plex! Have you ever seen the X-Plex anywhere else? FWA action. And now, what's James got? Oh, here it is. James is formidable. Titanic. It looks like it's finisher heaven for all these three guys. They're going for it. It's all out. It's all on the line. James tires slowly to his feet. Picks up Jack Xavier. Doesn't go for the pin. That's going to come back and hot James later but James sends Jack into the corner Jack with a boot to the face and now Jack's going for his devastating tornado DDT James Ty counters the move oh crushed on the top rope but Raj goes his perch oh a glancing blow on James Ty enough to send James into Jack and once again Jack Xavier is on the outside of the ring the wild card of this match Raj Ghosh is now back in control and he's sending James up is it a suplex oh brain buster on James Ty Raj Ghosh all he needs to do is get the arm over I'm sure that's a one two three right there Raj dropped and James right on the back of his head and he could have it right here the last second James Ty knows what's on the line he manages to deep down dig up pull the arm up as Raj goes again goes with those devastating blows to the gut Roger again now sends in James to the ropes oh, and now Jack just flipped in did you see that he could be a gymnast as he takes him into the ropes Raj holds on to the ropes and now James now flips over and oh, oh my god, god. Three count, James Tyre is the new number one contender for the All England title.
that was an unbelievable match. James Ty has defeated both Raj Raja Ghosh and he has also defeated Jack Xavier and he will go on to face whomever the All England Champion will be. But the question now is, Tony, who's going to be the All England Champion? Will it be the South City Thriller Hey Vanson or will it be the mulleted one, the Zebra Kid? Our front is of honour 2003. James Ty took on the top US independent standout, Paul London. Both wrestlers had very similar styles, and it was impossible to predict just who would emerge victorious. As a result of this outstanding contest, James Ty secured his name as one of Britain's top wrestling talents, and Paul London went on to secure a contract with the WWE. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the top young lines in the FWA, James Ty, is on his way to the ring to meet possibly the hardest challenge he's ever had to date in the form of Ring of Honor's own, Paul London. James Ty, he's fantastic. We consider him almost the first son of the FWA Academy. And tonight, Tony, do you think this is the night that maybe his stock is going to rise? You know what, Nick? James Ty is somebody I've had my eye on for a very, very long time. Ever since his debut in the FWA, you can see there was something there. It just took something to bring it out of him. I think it was dumping his former mentor, Mark Sloan, that made James Ty realize the talent he had and took him up to the next level. Very first time he's over here, Nick, and he's over representing the Ring of Honor versus FWA. It's the ECWA 2003 Super 8 tournament winner, the one and only Paul London, trained by none other than Shawn Michaels and Rudy Boy Gonzalez. These two men are so, so evenly matched. This is going to be so hard to call, but Nick, I cannot wait. No, neither can I. Paul London has of late over the last few months in the Ring of Honor. His game has improved tenfold. He recently held the number one contendership trophy, and that is quite prestigious in the Ring of Honor competition. However, tonight, it's not about the Ring of Honor number one contendership trophy or any titles. It's all about the spirit of competition. FWA versus Ring of Honor. Referee Andrew Coy now getting Paul London to the corner to check his ring boots. I'm not sure he's quite used to this, but he's going to have to because he's fighting over here in the United Kingdom. As we see, both men, Nick, the obligatory handshake must start the match. When we have the handshake, then things can get underway. FWA and Ring of Honor officials spent ages trying to compromise on the rules for tonight. However, the handshake was kept in. For the spirit of competition, I think it's a fantastic idea. Both men have shook hands, and now we're ready to wrestle. As Paul London slowly making an advance there toward James Ty, both men circling the ring as they go in for the lockup. And there they are, James, nice arm drag. James obviously making a statement there about his technical prowess. Both these men, as you said, so evenly matched. Technically, high flying, you name it, they're even. Back in once again, I am Paul London takes over James Ty this time. Anything you can do, I can do better. Paul London is making a statement right back at James. It's very early, in, early on in the match, Nick, excuse me there. What do you think we're going to see out of this match, Nick? Is it going to be technical? Is it going to be high flying? As James Tyre now goes in with a waist lock, Paul London reverses the waist lock of his own. James Tyre back again, Paul London, and they both part. Both men desperate to jockey for position there. If you can get behind, then you can control the match. You can set it to your own pace, and you've got the advantage. And that's what these two men want. Both these men are under a huge amount of pressure here, Tony. 
Both men want to get the first point in this Ring of Honor versus FWA competition. You know, Nick, it has to be a little bit daunting. It's Paul London's first time over here wrestling in the UK, and he walks into York called Bethnal Green. He sees the over a thousand capacity crowd, and he's wrestling James Ty. He's got to have butterflies. For me, I'm going to give the advantage to James Ty. Well, I'm not sure who's going to win this match, but whoever. I say the man who wins this match, that company will eventually win the whole tournament. The first point is so important. Paul London now, desperate to hold on to that headlock. But don't let me remind you, the last time James Ty was in Bethnal Green, York Hall, he had that phenomenal triple threat match against Raj Ghost and Jack Xavier. Let's see if he can give us another match of the year candidate right here tonight. Paul London still with a vice-like grip there. James Ty trying to break the headlock, but Paul London keeping it firmly on. James Ty now with some blows to the abdomen of Paul London, and he sends him off into the ropes. Paul London knocks down James off the ropes. He goes over James. Oh, standing moonsault! And James was not expecting that. And now Paul London goes to kick to the head, but misses, and James with a waist lock. James Ty with a waist lock there. Paul London, both men back up to his feet, in with the wrist lock. A forearm there to James Ty, sends him off into the ropes. James reverses, he dug that clothesline, goes for a drop kick, and nails it. Both men were down, both men are up. Now James off the ropes, oh, moves on, drop kick. At the moment, Nick, it's been move for move, it's been very even. In a match like this, the only way I can see you would get an advantage would be whoever makes the first mistake. I know it's a bad thing to say, but whoever makes that first mistake, I can see coming out on the losing end. All it's going to take is one tiny slip up, and one man will have the advantage. You think that's a terrible thing? I say that's fantastic. This is what the spirit of competition is all about. You've got to be perfect to win in the FWA and Ring of Honor. Paul London now wailing away at James Ty. It's a good thing the yellow and red card system is taken out. Because you've got to believe that one of these men could have received the yellow already. James now with all the reversal. James in the corner. Paul London follows. James Ty. Matt John drops him over the top right. The block of the hand. 4 0 on his own. And Paul London now over the top. Oh, and a lovely head scissors takedown. A nice vaulting head scissors there. Taking James from one side of the ring to the other. Paul London goes with the baseball slide through the legs. James Ty goes with the kick. And Paul London. A lovely spinning heel kick, taking James Ty down. Sweet mother Mary, that was a hell of a kick. And now another moonsault drop kick. Paul London in control. Have you ever seen a drop kick as nice as the way Paul London does it, Nick? He puts that extra little bit of flair in. And Nick, oh, James Ty goes with an awesome monkey flip there. Paul London sent up, and he's going for the top rope. And oh, Paul London to the outside. That was beautiful, Tony. James Ty used a nice technical shove to shove Paul London to the outside. And just smacked his jaw across the railings on the outside and that could be oh wait a minute tony looks like paul may be favoring the arm over there nick it looks as though it's just reiterated the point i just made whoever makes the first mistake is going to be at a loss it looks as though paul london may have uh, damaged his arm sorry or his elbow when he crash landed onto the guardrail james tyre has noticed it and it looks as though james tyre is maybe going to try and work over that one area of the body try and get fwa one ring of honor nil you know what james tyre you started out as mark swain's lackey but look how far he has come he is now on the verge of beating paul london james could very well get a great oh lovely arm ringer there it looked like James is on the verge of breaking out into the United States to join Johnny Doug and Jody over the pond. You know what, Nick? I think it's a little bit too early to count out Paul London, yet he is a phenomenal competitor. Saying that, though, James Ty is basically just working over that one area, but Paul London goes with a reversal there, and he has got a wrist lock, trying to shake the paint out of his arm. There's James Ty. Oh, awesome leg snap there. Oh, it looks as though he, he, he had the elbow, but he was also going for the wrist as well. Tell you what happened. Paul London was trying to isolate the arms of James Ty. But because... Oh, wait a minute. It's going to top right, but Paul drags him down. James with a kick. Let's see where he can go here. James now over the top. Misses. Oh! Sweet, beautiful kick to the face of James there. Paul London in control. Where's Paul London going? Paul London's on the outside of the apron. He's signaling for something. I'm not quite sure what it is. Oh, my Lord! Shooting star press from the outside of the apron. Nick, there's like five, maybe six inches. quite frankly Tony and now Paul London is working over the course of James Ty however you've got to wonder whether that arm's going to come back to haunt Paul London he is obviously injured and you don't want to be injured in a match against James Ty lovely roll up off the springboard one two 
the kick out. Springboard Oklahoma roll there, but it wasn't enough for James Ty. Now Nick, every time Paul, every time, sorry, Paul London is using the arm, basically he's hurting himself. But at the moment it doesn't matter because all he cares about is winning this match. James Ty now with a waist lock. He's going for a German, but no, Paul London rolls him up. One, two, the oh, goal! The kick out, kick out there from James Ty. Paul London, oh, awesome into Gary. Takes James Ty over. Gorgeous step up into Gary there by Paul London, and now he's got the cover. One, two, not quite. At the moment, basically, Nick Paul London is wrestling this match with one arm. You can see him clutching it. He doesn't want to use it, but he will if he has to. He'll do what it takes to make sure that Paul London leaves a lasting impression in the York Hall Bethany Green. Awesome sent on bomb there. Did hurt James Ty, but you can see the pain on Paul London's face. Paul London now, one, two, three. Very close. I would have thought I could have got the free count. Paul London there drove the wind out of James Ty. But James still had the energy to kick out. Paul London now could have unstuck. Ceremonious kicks to the back of James and now he's got him in the corner he's going to launch him out but James is holding on for all he's worth you see what James Ty is doing there he's, he's, he's blocking Paul London but he's also wrenching the arm every time causing more pain to Paul London as Paul London up onto the second row oh, oh, no, James no, no wait he's got him he's hooked him at one strength bridging oh that was one two so no it was a bridging four away slam there Nick sorry to cut you off James Tyler looks as though he thought that was going to be it, but Paul London still managing to get that badly injured arm up as James Tyler now into the ropes sends Paul London off. And now Paul London reverses, but James, gorgeous German suplex, one, two, three, no! Oh, so close, Nick, the cross arm German suplex. Every move James Ty is doing, no matter what it is, suplex, arm ring, it's all focused on one thing, the injured arm of Paul London. London has true heart and spirit. It's not surprising that his surname is London. He's a winner, Tony, and you know it. And there it is. Oh, sit down in the gear. No, sorry. You're an archer suplex by James there. Could he get the win? No, not quite. As you see Paul London trying to lay some elbows into James Ty's head there. Every time he's using that arm, he's trying to get some offense, but basically he's hurting himself even more. James Ty seems to be signaling for something. Is this going to be the end for Paul London? James charges in. Nice knee there. Looks like he might be going for another one. And, oh, nice, oh, oh, nice knee. Aim for the shoulder. Maybe got some of the elbow as well. As he's going now, he's off one, two. Oh! Taking Paul London down, using his arm. Nick. Paul London, whole world of hurt. James Ty knows what he needs to do. I think James Ty has the right idea. I've never seen a man be de dissected technically like James is doing to London here. But James, Asai Muto to the outside, wiping out both men. Remember the FWA rules where the 20 count still applies here. If one of these men are counted out, still, it's a win for the other man. As we see referee Andrew Coyne checking on both men outside, he's telling Paul London he's got to get back inside the ring if he wants to make it. If he wants to make it a victory with honour, Nick, that's the way it's going to be. A pinfall or a submission, none of this count out business as James Tyke goes in for the pin. I imagine that James wouldn't want to win by a count out and neither would London. James now sending up London into the corner. Could we be seeing a superplex maybe, Tony? Uh, Nick. James Ty can be awesome on the top rope and so can Paul London. It looks as though James Ty may be setting up. He's got hold of the arm. Is he maybe going for an arm? Oh, but Paul London's fighting away. Could he be going for the London Star Press? But no, James cuts him off. It's why I'm thinking that Paul London on the top rope is a dangerous thing, especially if you've got a London Star press looming over you although James Ty is going it looks as though he's going to go for an arm breaker a snap mare off the top rope James Ty is down Paul London is signaling for something but James once again cuts him off Paul London is desperate to hit the London star press because if he can hit it it's going to be one point to ring of honor because it'll be all she wrote but James is going for the superplex can he get him over but London reverses London reverses sending James Ty face first Paul London's up oh we're going to see it Nick is this going to be it London, stop! No! Oh my lord, Nick, he went for it. He hit it. He missed. James Ty had the smarts to roll out of the way as he rolls over. Sorry, rolls through and he goes up and he's going. Here we go, for minimal Ty And he hits it perfectly. Come on, James. This roll is gonna over. be it. Wait a minute, James is standing, shooting star press. One, two, three. Nick gets it, Tony. It's all over, Nick. FWA one, Ring of Honor nil. FWA one, Ring of Honor nil, indeed. But it's still early days in the competition. James Ty is your winner. James Ty has got the early lead for the FWA. But coming up next, Tony, Jack Xavier is going to have a lot on his plate because he's going to take on the former ECW 
AEW legend, Mikey Whipwreck. Wow, Nick, that is an amazing match, but I cannot believe the match we have just seen. Let's take you back now to the inaugural Frontiers of Honor event in 2003, as the FWA's top stars battled Ring of Honor's finest. Jack Xavier's opponent for the evening was former ECW heavyweight champion, Mikey Whipwreck. Few gave Xavier a chance of winning going into the bout, but the matchup actually turned out to be a pivotal moment in Xavier's career and one of the biggest upsets in FWA history. We see Jack Xavier making his way to ringside, slapping the hands of some of his fans. Nick. Jack Xavier made his debut in the FWA a little over two years ago, answering the open, an open challenge issued by the show stealer Alex Shane. Now, although he wasn't able to win the match on that night, what he did manage to do was open the eyes of some of the FWA fans and open the eyes of the FWA management. Ever since that day, there's been a fire burning inside of Jack Xavier, trying to get better and better. This has led him to classic matches against the likes of Doug Williams, Flash Barker and the All England Champion The Zebra Kid. Will tonight be any different? Will tonight be the night that Jack Xavier goes one up against the ECW legend Mikey Whip? It was an absolute crying shame Tony when Jack Xavier was looked over for Rookie of the Year but you've got to believe that a win over the ECW legend will more than make up for it. you are looking upon a true legend in wrestling. This is former ECW's Mikey Whipwreck. In ECW, he was one of the very few competitors to hold the Triple Crown. That is the World Television, the Tag Team, and the World Heavyweight Championship. He's also had a former stint in the WCW Cruiserweight Division. He is a true veteran in every meaning of the word. And you've got to believe, Tony, he's going to be bringing all this raw experience and he's going to use it at the expense of the young Jack Xavier. You know what, Nick, looking at this match on paper and looking at it in person as well, Mikey Whitbreak has such a huge advantage over Jack Xavier. He was in ECW, he was in WCW, he was even in the WWF for a short period of time. He actually wrestled Taz on WWF Raw. All of these years of experience have got away heavily in Mikey's favour. But what Jack Xavier does have on his side is use. Are we going to see more quickness from Jack Xavier? Are we going to see some more elaborate moves from Jack Xavier? Or is it going to be ring smart and ring veteran Mikey Whipwreck walking out with the win? Yes, Jack Xavier is a much nippier competitor, but that's because Jack Xavier, like Mikey Whipwreck, doesn't have years of being battered over the head with a steel chair and doing these ridiculous falling from the top of the ring apron to the cold concrete. That's right, Nick, as we Mikey Whipwreck is he going to get into the ring? Nick, Mikey Whipwreck seems like a strange character to me. He's a little bit all over the place. He, he's a little, well, let's put it this way, Tony. He's a few sandwiches short of a picnic. He really does have a few screws loose in his noggin, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean, Nick. But this match, looking at it from a wrestling point of view, this should be absolutely off the charts awesome. The second match on Frontiers of Honor, Mikey Whipwreck. Jack Xavier. Jack Xavier and Mikey Whitwreck, they have a lot of similarities. I'm sure just by looking at them that you can see it, Tony. Jack and Xavier might want to look at Mikey Whitwreck real close, because Jack, if you continue the way you're going, that's your future, bucko. As you hear the sound of the bell, Nick, the second match of Frontier of Honor is underway. Mikey Whitwreck versus Jack Xavier. are passionate here tonight, Tony. First they're chanting one company name, and then they're chanting FWA 
you got to believe that Jack Xavier will be fueled by the enthusiasm of the fans here tonight. It's going to be Jack Xavier versus Mikey Whitwreck. Mikey Whitwreck will be looking to bring... A nice suplex, uh, sorry, a body slam there from Jack Xavier. Jack Xavier seems to be signaling, he's signaling for the top rope. This is an area that Jack Xavier is used to. And the fans want Jack to fly. But Jack, I've got to tell you, Tony, Jack's taking way too much time here. A veteran like Mikey Whitwright. This could be costly. Jack over the top, but he misses the soul oh, time. Word, a swing and a miss for Jack Xavier. Awesome Kick takes Jack Xavier down. Surely this one, is one, two, three. My lord, Tony, that was a hell of a wonderful kick there for Mikey Whitray. I just saw the light flash before the eyes of Jack Xavier. And now, Mikey Whitray, he's trying to position Jack in the precarious position here on the ropes. Whereas he's got him sort of dragging, he's, he's dragged him over the top bottom rope. Sorry. Oh, and again, seeing leg drop. Sends Jack crashing down onto the bottom rope. Jack once again on the outside of the ring. Trademark move there by Mikey Whitwreck. We've seen him use that often before in ECW. Not so much in Ring of Honor, mine. Looks like Mikey could be going back to those roots of his. Mikey Whitwreck now looks what like What are we going to see here, Nick? Something. Oh, face plant right on the chair. Look at how bent that chair is, Nick. Jack Xavier just left a face print all over that steel chair. And his face must be damaged beyond belief. Jack is clutching his face, whereas Mikey Whitwreck is grinning like a madman. Mikey Whitwreck does seem, there is there is a method to his madness. He's going to hurt Jack Xavier. He's not going to break him down bit by bit. He's going to take the whole thing in one go. You say there's a method to his madness, but Tony, let me ask you this. Is it more method or is it just more madness? Is Mikey Whitwreck trying to bring pain to Jack? What? No. Jack Xavier kicked out. He's got too much heart, too much pride. The FWA versus Ring of Honor competition is on the line. As once again, Mikey Whitbrick is in control of this match, as he has been for most of it. Jack Xavier, he needs to get up, he needs to get on the offense, as Mikey Whitbrick showing a little bit of disrespect there with a boot to the head. Off the ropes, Tony. Jack comes back, but wait! Swinging neck breaker, and both men are down. Could this be the turning point, Nick? Could this be the thing that might? Uh, could this be the thing that, that Jack Xavier needs? Is this going to be the point where Jack Xavier realizes he's hurt, Mikey? He needs to get up. He needs to get back on his offense. It was like Mikey Whitwreck kind of had his neck twisted with that move, but I think Jack also took a bit of a blow to the back of the head. Mikey fell a bit funny onto, but it looks like Jack. Jack might be recovering first here, Tony. Jack strung to his feet and he makes it. Both men are slowly getting up. Both men are very wobbly at the moment, and a punch from Mikey Whitwreck and one from Jack Xavier. Remember the yellow, red yellow card system not in effect here. Punches will be a little more lenient. Off the ropes. Jack off the ropes now. And there we go. Hit toss attempt. But block over the top. Couple of forearms to the head. And here we go. Jack liner. Nice one. Jack Xavier using the offense, using the momentum. One, two, three. Oh! Mikey Whitbrick managed to get the arm up right at the closing seconds. Look at Jack Xavier's face. Come on, Reg. I thought that was a free. I believe you do, Jack. I swore that was a free myself. But the competition continues here tonight. Mikey Whitbrick is one tough customer to put away. Jack now, he's sending Mikey into the corner. Mikey hits the corner. But a foot to the face. And now Mikey climbing up. This could be dangerous. Could have been Tornado DDT. No, it was an attempt. Jack Xavier blocks. He goes in for the clothesline. Mikey Whitbrick. Oh! Russian leg sweep, the back of Jack Xavier's head crashing down to the mat. No, another kick out. I've got to tell you, for a madman, Mikey Whitwreck is a fantastically technical wrestler. Mikey Whitwreck was concerned with the referee. Hang on a second. Jack up. No! Bloody hell, Tony. Jack Xavier used the last little bit of energy he had. He managed to nip up and clip Mikey Whitwreck down the back of the head. Both men are down now. Both men seem as though they are out for the count. Both men look like they're dreaming and this could come down to a double count out. As we see both men now then not moving very quickly Nick, I've got to say, referee Steve Linsky is putting the 10 count in. Jack Xavier though slowly, ever so slowly trying to make it to his feet. Linsky's re Lins referee Steve Linsky's nearly reaching the end of the count. Can Jack get up? I think he just barely made it. Barely. This match is continuing. Nick, he's going to need the ropes to hold him up as Mikey Whitbreak himself is slowly, slowly getting up. Jack Xavier is signaling for the end. He's calling for it. Are we going to see the roll and release X-Plex or are we going to see the Xaviator? Both moves very vicious but it looks like Xaviator set up and here we go. Takes him up. Xaviator. He's got him down. Surely this
This is it. One. One. Two. two. No! Mikey Whitbricks managed to kick out of Jack Xavier's finisher. Look at the look on Jack Xavier's face. One, two, three. Come on, ref. I thought that was it. When you consider that Mikey Whitbrick has been taken from the top rope through several hundred tables, chairs, phone tanks, you name it, to a cold concrete floor. I'm not that surprised he kicked out, but all the same, the Xavier is a devastating move. And Mikey Whitbrick kicked out. Jack must be wondering, what have I got to do to put away this man? Mikey Whitbrick's got the foot, takes him over, and oh my word, he must have learned one of those kicks from his former tag partner, Yoshihiro Tajiri, taking Jack Xavier down, what a crushing blow. Is he going to be going for the same sort of thing, Nick? Is he going to do the same thing again? He's no. pulling Jack Xavier up. He's picking him up. He's setting him up. Mate, he's going with Xavier himself. No! Oh my word, whippersnapper, Jack Xavier is out. was to walk out of here tonight, one up on Mikey Whipwreck. Tony, have you ever seen anyone kick out of the Whipper Snapper? Oh my, my heaven, and now this match continues. Jack's over the top row, he's got him with he some goes to the wheel, wheel, he's made sure one, one, two, 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 he's got it, two, he's got it, Jack Xavier's done it, 2-0, FWA, Jack Xavier's beaten Mikey Whipwreck. Bloody hell, Tony, he just got him out of nowhere. He rolled up Mikey Whipwreck, he rolled up the former ECW legend, but more importantly, truly stunned, pardon the pun. I'm sure when Jack Zayer clears the cobwebs from his head and realise he's just beaten Mikey Whitbrick, he won't believe what has happened. Mikey Whitbrick is up. Mikey Whitbrick, fair enough, I got beat. I thought it was only a two, but it was a three. Mikey Whitbrick cannot believe it, and you've got to believe that the ring of on a locker room must be sweating now. They're behind on points. Oh, Mikey Whitbrick looks just a little insane. Can you feel the tension, Tony? Nick, what are we going to see? Mike Whitbrick throwing his shirt off. <laughs> are we going to see round two, Nick? It looks as though it might not be over. Mike Whitbrick is in now. Well, I can just feel the tension here. Referee Steve Linsky confirms that Mikey, that Mikey Whitbrick was indeed pinned. One, two, three by the young rookie. Mikey Whitbrick does have a confused look, but he stretches the hand. Is this a ploy? No, he's showing the respect that Jack Xavier deserves. Honor is alive here tonight. Bethnal Green, your call. What a fantastic contest. But Tony cannot... We hope you've enjoyed this special video profile on the careers of Jack Xavier and James Ty, two of the FWA Academy's most successful graduates. For anyone following in their footsteps, the future can only be bright. Join us again soon for more FWA TV. FWA! FWA!